Okay, so this is going to be just a little tutorial to show you how to get the best out of the Artmatic Designer interactive texture and background library that I've created. Um, I made this library because I often hear from people that they, they really love what they see me doing with Artmatic, but they, they think it's too complicated for them and that they're daunted by getting into using Artmatic and using its power. Well, it, it is true, it, it does take some time to understand it well. But that's no reason that you shouldn't be able to use it for your own projects and also to get some idea of, of, of what kinds of great things you can do with Artmatic. So um, what I did was I created a bunch of files. They go over a whole range of different kinds of things. So there's, um, you know, there's a, a fair variety in, in what you'll find in this library. But I've created the systems in such a way that you can, with very little Artmatic knowledge, get some useful and productive images from, from the application that you can go on to uh, include in, in your other work, whether that might be you know, graphic design or uh, games texturing or numerous other applications. I'll also give you some idea of, of, of how Artmatic works, familiarise you with the, the Artmatic interface uh, and, and hopefully um, inspire you to go on and learn a little bit about how to program in Artmatic as well. Okay, so uh, well, well, let's boot Artmatic Designer. That would be something that would be worth doing for a start. You'll notice that um, what always happens when you boot the Artmatic application is that you get a, a, a random, some kind of random system in here. It's always some new different thing. Let's just have a look at that. I'll quit again and we'll I'll show you that. A lot of this is just basically for people who haven't used Artmatic before. Um, just to give you some feeling for how Artmatic uh, works. Uh, now the idea behind this is just that when, when you see a new, when you boot a new, uh, a new instance of, of the Artmatic Designer program, you've got a new thing to inspire you, some randomly based new system that gives you some idea. Uh, you, you may get sort of something that's not very interesting like this one, uh, or you might get something that's actually quite interesting. You know, quite often it throws up the most incredible pictures, just this completely randomly, of course. There's no, no nothing uh, logical, uh, no process running here. This is just random tiles that are that are all jammed together to give you some <laughs> strange startup screen. Uh, but quite often, you, you will see something you like, and you can always save that system and uh, and come back to it at a further time to uh, generate images from it if you so desire. So I'll just explain a few little things about uh, the Artmatic um, interface here, just for people who haven't, who are not familiar with it. This is the main canvas, so this is where this is where we work with with most of our our images. Uh, it gives you a very good idea of of uh, what the system is going, what that particular system is going to render like when you do a render. Over here we have a bunch of keyframes. Uh, in fact, what I'll do just to make this more relevant is I'll, I'll boot up one of the uh, the textures from the texture library. Um, uh, let's go for glass and water. One of my favourites here is called Tokyo Freeze. These are the algorithms over here that are actually creating this particular image. For purposes of, of the, uh, the texture and backgrounds library, you don't really need to understand what's going on here. The, the systems have been designed so that you can get productive things out of this without knowing anything at all about this kind of joining up of the system. So I'll just explain a little bit about it so that you just know where, you, where you're going. This is the main canvas, as I said. Down the side here we have some keyframes. These are like little snapshots of, of places in this particular system. We have a series of controls up the top here which just uh, do various things. We're really only going to be concerned with two of them for this library and it'll be these two and we'll talk about that later. So the main things you'll need to know about are those two icons, these keyframes and these little things down here. We, you won't need to use the dice, in fact I recommend for this library that you stay right away from those because that'll confuse you a lot. You won't need to worry about these parameter sliders and you won't really need to know anything about this stuff in the tree, so just ignore all of that stuff. In some of these textures in the texture and backgrounds library, the colour controls are relevant, um, but only in a very few of them. Artmatic gets its colours from various places in the system and in many of these systems the colours are being generated by RGB tiles inside these systems. So I would recommend that unless you know what you're doing, stay away from the 
from altering the colors. You can play with them by all means, but you'll find that in a lot of cases they'll make no difference. Um, you know, I can select one here and you'll see it just made no difference at all to this system. That's because there is no color from this this part of the Artmatic Designer program influencing what's on the canvas here. So um, let's go back and have a look at the library. So I'm just going to go back here and we'll go to the top of the library. So you'll see here I've arranged all of the files in uh, a certain number of different categories. Uh, these, these categories are uh, really just a guide. A lot of them can be used in all kinds of different ways. It's basically um, just a, a way of, of navigating through them. But you know, with, with images of these kinds, it's hard often to, to, to make something <laughs> make sense for what it is without giving it an incredibly long file name. So, you know, I've called this one Tokyo Freeze just because it gives me some idea of, of, of what inspired this particular set of, of um, presets. So, the way these libraries work is that when you, when you boot up one of the textures or backgrounds, you're basically looking into a, a space, a texture space. It's not just the texture you see on the screen here. It's kind of like a, a general space for this kind of texture. The keyframes that come up as the default keyframes in each of the systems gives you some idea of what's in that space. They're really just only a guide. So you can see by clicking through them that they are all sort of similar. There's similar kinds of colouring and similar kinds of shapes and the same glassy refractive feel to it. All of that stuff um, is reflected in these keyframes, but they're quite different as well. Uh, you can, by all means, use any of these keyframes if you see something you like render it out and go for it. But the real fun part of this library is that I've designed it so that you can come up with your own images. What we'll do is just uh, for the sake of it, we're going to clear all these images. We'll put this one in there just for fun to start with. And we're going to uh, use one of the very powerful parts of, of the Artmatic system, and that is the mutations function. Now, you can invoke that mutations functions in, in a couple of ways. You can you can do it from the menus up the top of course. Uh, you can use command F will bring it up or you can use the little tree over here and the tree just reflects that it's a kind of a branching system. So let's click on this and you'll see the dialog will pop up. Okay so we're, we now have uh, a bunch of mutations based on this first one. It's just mutating functions that I've allowed it to mutate and it's taking a certain amount of time to mutate those things. You can make it mutate a lot less over a lot less time. You'll see how it just changes very gradually if I pull this right down here. Still mutating but only a tiny little bit. Or you can make it mutate very widely over a very short amount of time. And effectively what will happen is if I find something that I quite like here, I can put it in there and you'll see it places, I click on it, it places it straight back into the top tile and it will mutate again. This is the new starting point for a whole lot of new mutations. So this will keep on happening. You can do this as much as you like. So you'll see this is literally an infinite number of variations. They're all in this same style but this is going to mutate as much as I want it to mutate for as long as I want it to mutate and every one of these will be different. There are really essentially three things mutating in this particular um, system. We've got a little bit of mutation uh, in the shapes. You'll see the shapes are actually all doing different things. Uh, we've got some mutation in the colors and we've got a little tiny bit of mutation in the, the refractive properties over the top, which are a bit hard to see in this mutations window, but when you come into the big screen, you'll see that. So let's just grab a few of these and we can, we can add these to our keyframes just by clicking in the keyframe that we want it to be in, or we can just use the add control down here. Or if we find something we like better than that one, we can replace it. Simple as that. Uh, when we're happy with uh, a bunch of keyframes here, we can look at these in the main window just by hitting the tick button. See it pops it back up into the main window and these keyframes are filled now with the ones that we selected in the mutations window. You'll see that this is a good way of just having a, having a look at what they look like. Just click through them, get a bit larger resolution. And now what I really highly recommend that you do with all of these textures is look at them at full screen. And the way that we do that is we can either click on the eye icon over here, which will take us to a full screen render. 
takes a little longer obviously because it's now doing a render so it's doing some maths calculations. Just click on that to exit. Um, let's select another one or you can use um, just type the V key. The V key will do the same thing. V key will give you a full screen render. You'll notice doing this you can see a, a large amount more detail and this is particularly important in some of the textures, not so much in this one but uh, some of the paper textures and um, some of the stone textures. There's a, a really really high amount of detail and the only way to see it is to do it full screen. The Artmatic canvas won't actually render it at the, at the resolution that will give it its best uh, definition. We're just kind of tooling around in that one a little bit but let's, let's open another texture. So um, I've got a few that I've saved here. We don't want to save anything for the moment. This is a nice kind of tattered, decaying kind of looking texture. We'll look at that full screen. Let's have a look at this one full screen by typing the V key. This one will take a little longer to render to screen because it's slightly more complex texture. Generally speaking, uh, the more complex the, the maths behind the textures, the longer they take to render to screen or to render generally. So lots of nice little kind of detail there, nice spooky kind of background. Another thing that you can do which is uh, also very useful is that the, the canvas can be dragged. So if you just click and hold and as you move your mouse, you can drag drag the canvas around. So if you find something that's uh, that looks kind of like what you want but it's not quite the right sort of uh, framing or uh, you want a slightly different uh, look to it, just, just uh, feel free to keep doing that as much as you want. This, this is a kind of an infinite canvas so you can keep on doing this as much as you want and it'll all be different um, very slightly but everything will be different so each little exploration that you make here is going to give you a, a completely original image. You can also zoom in and out of it if you wish to do that. You can go quite a long way in you'll notice that it will change the look of the texture and you can go a long way out as well and you'll see the further out you go, the more you'll see uh, how infinite the, the canvas actually is. And the great thing to remember is that by doing that you're not affecting the resolution of your final image render. If you zoom in and render, it'll render at high resolution. If you zoom out and render, it'll render at high resolution. Nothing will change. This is just a canvas which is a representation of where you are in the system. So the maths will ensure that no matter where you look at the system, it will be rendered at whatever resolution you want it to be. The main other thing that you'll need to know is uh, how to get this um, out to a file. And this is the second of these controls here, that little icon. Clicking on that will uh, will bring up the save image dialog and there's two other ways of doing that. You can also do that from the file menu up here but you can also go command J and that will bring up that window as well. You'll see in this window you've got a variety of different ways that you can actually save this image. Choose your file format. Uh, you've got some custom sizes. Many of these pertain to movies and um, HD and things like that so you, you may not want them but that doesn't matter you've got a custom size as well so you can set your custom size here in pixels and you do that just by clicking on it and typing the number in that will give you um, let's say 1200 and say 650 and when we click on preview you'll see the format has slightly changed because I changed the, the, the ratio of the numbers and we just uh, render to a file, just as, as easy as that. We just go torn curtain at, at a PNG file and render it and uh, Artmatic will go about doing a render. Now the really great thing about this library is that you can render these images at monumentally high resolutions. So no matter what the, the purpose you, you have in mind for your image, you're going to be able to render it for, um, for that purpose. It will actually render an image which is um, 
quite vast, probably uh, you know around five feet square at photo resolution if you really wanted to do that, um, which is going to be pretty good for most uses. Uh, you can also obviously render for, for web size and uh, you know any other purpose that you might have. You can do some, uh, there are some, because you can set your canvas at whatever size you like here, it's also good for uh, creating scrolling backgrounds and things like that. So it's, uh, it's very versatile uh, in, in that respect. And that's pretty much all you need to know to get started with the Artmatic Designer Interactive Texture and Backgrounds Library. I suggest uh, the, the best way of proceeding is open up the folders, uh, have a look through all of the presets, render them all at full screen, have a look at what's available, and then you're pretty much set to go. That's really all it. There's nothing much more you need to know other than those things. Once you start to get a little bit more familiar with the interface, you might like to kind of play around and see what uh, else you can do with Artmatic. Uh, there's a very comprehensive uh, user guide which tells you pretty much how everything works. You can get as complicated or, or as simple as you like with Artmatic. So uh, I hope that you get something out of these libraries and I, I really hope you enjoy them. And write to me and let me know because uh, I'll be continuing with these libraries if there's anything else that you think that you might like to see or uh, if there's uh, any any of the textures that you do see that you want to know how to modify you might have ideas for or even textures of your own that you'd like to see included in upcoming libraries let me know about them and uh, and we'll uh, we'll take it from there but uh, enjoy the library I hope that you do some really good things with it and uh, let me know where your images go and what they get used for